Good afternoon, Beltomaniacs. What's good? What's new? What do you know? What do you say? It's Belt Mark Bill coming back at you today to celebrate another new Belt Day. That's right, guys. Belt Mark Bill, happily socially distancing since 2016. Well, what can I tell you? The introduction, as always, needs a tad bit of work. Anyway, like I said, uh, it's a new Belt Day today. And today I'm bringing you something that is uh, truly original, something new, something fun, something that comes to us from the minds of Beltamania. What is Beltamania, you ask? Well, if you don't know already, get on the bandwagon, guys. Beltamania is the first ever live stream show, loosely based, loosely termed podcast based completely upon the love of all things wrestling and specifically wrestling belts. We help produce them, we sell them, we trade them. We can re-leather them, we can upgrade them with re-stones. We can do all kinds of things to make your wildest belt dreams come true. Beltamania consists of myself, my co-hosts Carmine Sabia, Jeff Parthay, Joe Rotunda, and Mark Cyrus. We can be seen Tuesday nights at 7.15, originating out of the Beltamania group on Facebook, but simulcast in other groups on Facebook like the Brothers of the Belt, the Belt Outcasts, uh, Generational Wrestling Society, Wrestling Review Society, places like that, and right here on YouTube. You can also catch us Saturdays at 8 p.m. in the same aforementioned places as well as right here on YouTube. Go over to the YouTube channel, click subscribe, click the little bell for notifications, and wait for hilarity to ensue. Anyway, like I said, uh, that's Beltamania. From the minds of Beltamania comes today's new Belt Day and a little bit, of, little bit of history. The guys and I are all old school fans. We've been fans for a long, long time. And uh, we remember that golden age of WWF, WWF television, the Hulk Hogan era, when Vince's vision was sweeping across the country. Back then, when you went to the arenas to go to live shows, house shows, there was a lot of foam made merchandise, like foam fingers, like different kinds of foam hands, foam hand signs, shapes, right? Two by four. Funeral urn. Nightstick. Okay, and one of the silliest ones, the razor blade, the razor Ramon razor blade, because this thing is way too sharp you got to make it in foam to keep the kids safe. But these were sold around the arenas. Like if, when I was a kid, when you went to Madison Square Garden, when you went to Nassau Coliseum to see the wrestling matches, they sold these out in the concourse. Uh, they sold them out in the audience. And uh, they made a lot of foam stuff. One of the things they made in the late 80s, in 1988, was a series of these foam belts for kids. Very much size for kids, as you can see. But there was a whole set of these. A whole, uh, there was the World Championship the Intercontinental Championship, the Tag Team Championship, and they even made a Women's Championship, uh, as you can see. Uh, these were nothing too spectacular. These were nothing too fancy. These were cheap arena souvenirs and toys. You can get them at the arenas. Like I said, I saw these at the Garden. I saw these at Nassau Coliseum. Uh, but you could also order them out of the old WWF magazine back in the days before there was a shop.wwe.com. Come on, Vince, give me a couple of bucks every time I say it. Go back into the library. I've said it quite a bit. Come on. Give me a call. Uh, but you could order these out of WWF Magazine. And I did. I definitely did. When I was younger, uh, but still too old to be playing with such things. Still too small for a guy like me. But I had them. I ordered them. I, I had the Intercontinental, the tag, and this world title here. Uh, simply because it's like, you know, just a cool thing to have in the room. Cool thing to have in the collection. You know, you're flying the flag, you're showing the colors, and it was just one of those nifty things. And besides, being a belt guy myself who used to make them out of cardboard, I was intrigued to get something like this, but disappointed when it showed up in the mail and you could see how big it really was. It wasn't very big. It was really sized for a kid. So the guys and myself at Beltamania thought, how much fun would it be to realize the foam belt in a scale for us big kids. Right? Pretty cool. The foam belt realized in full scale. The foam to life, or as we like to call it, the FTL belt. Uh, 
This is out of the creative minds of Beltamania. We're all about fun. We love this hobby. We love wrestling. We love having fun. We thought this was going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to stop the camera real quick. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to give you an up-close look at the Foam to Life belt alongside its Foam Inspiration. So, hang on real tight while I turn the camera around, set back up, and we will show you them up close. Right back. And we're back. Here we go, guys. From the minds of Beltamania, the World Wrestling Federation Foam Souvenir Belt, Kids Toy Belt Brought to Life, the Foam to Life Belt. Here we are, we're going to get, like I said, we're going to take a good look at what we've created up against where it all started. So, where it all started, like I said earlier, uh, foam and plastic. Souvenir from an arena show, toy for a kid. Nothing too spectacular. This thing is maybe a foot, uh, 14 inches, 15, at best 15 inches. I'm not measuring it for real, but 15 inches, 14 inches long in this position, in this folded appearance. Not huge, maybe by six inches, seven inches, not, for a child. Uh, not scaled to big kids like us. Um, plastic plates, about a millimeter. Two millimeter thick, maybe. Right. And they have this gold foil embossing on it. Right. I'm not sure what kind of process this is. The edges. It seems like it's pressed in. It, it leaves a, an edge. It leaves a, a rough kind of appearance to it. But it looks like some kind of photo. It's definitely not paint. It's lasted a long time. Uh, the art is reminiscent of what the Hogan 86 was at the time. Uh, it's not exact, but it's reminiscent of such. It has the same banners. It has the same elongated globe. The columns. The wreath of laurel over here, as well as some of this, these little scrolly worky things, you know, these clip art pieces, but reminiscent of what the Hogan 86 was. Probably when this was designed, that was the belt being used. The copyright down here says 1988. So by this time, they were already using the winged eagle version of the belt, so this is probably designed before that. So let's say this was designed in 87. You know, 86, 87 to be put out at the, you know, in, in round in 88. But anyway, I digress. So what we did here with our foam to life is recreated this in a similar vein, keeping it very simple. Okay? The plates are two millimeter brass. Okay? Two millimeter brass. Nice and high polished but with the black background, like you would see on the original. Okay? The original, like I says, whatever process they used to put the, uh, the, the gold on here, or the, uh, the, uh, the art on here, left a kind of blurry, kind of uneven, irregular kind of appearance to it. It's now nice and cleaned up. And the lines are nice, crisp, and sharp, and the brass is a high polish. Okay? We copied it right down to the letter so that our resident uh, television accuracy meister, Mr. Jeff Parthe, the proprietor and high, uh, craftsman of Immortal Restoning, come see us, so he wouldn't be upset. It is television. It is accurate. Huh? The center plate, like the original, the plastic toy, is shaped exactly like the original. But now the lines on this, because of this whatever process, are really nice and crisp now. And I think it comes off really nice. The banners, of course, World Wrestling Federation Champion, the WWF logo up and prominent in the center. Copied exactly, right? Just like the toy, elongated globe. Look at how the, look at how the globe is nice and crisp. The lines are nice and crisp and clean compared to this kind of rough appearance 
on the original. This is just a toy, we're not knocking it. But this is what we did, nice and clean. The columns, these, gold, these, uh, these columns look like gold pinstripes against a black background, they're so crisp. Each individual section of the laurel comes out nice and crisp. Even down here in the center, look at that little piece right there. Look at the shape of that little piece, that design in the middle there, where the two laurel leaves meet. We took that off this and cleaned it up. This is what I mean by blurry and just kind of not, just very irregular. And that's because of however this color or this art was printed onto here. All right? And down in the bottom, as you can see, the World Wrestling Federation 1988 Titan Sports all rights reserved. We made it exactly like the original toy. Second verse, same as the first, as the Ramones like to say, the second side plate is just like the first side plate. Two millimeter brass, high polished, WWF old school block logo, crispy lines, nice and clean, copied to the letter to look just like the original. Now, going back to the original real quick, let's show you on the original how this was fastened on. Okay. These belts were nothing too spectacular again. They came with these pre-molded fold lines here on either side of the side plates so that you could do a little fold it up and hold it in the interview position if that's what you wanted to do with it. Uh, you know, it came with these pre-molded lines here so that this could be cut and trimmed to the waist of a young kid. I mean, that's how small. Uh, you know, so they were on both sides and it was fastened by Velcro. This is the fuzzy portion. This is the original fuzzy portion. I think they call that the eyes and then they call the other portion the hooks. This is the eyes. The eyes is a, the only part remaining from the original. This belt is 32 years old. This little toy belt is 32 years old and it's seen a lot of, uh, probably a lot of play, but it's, it's, it's nice to have still in the collection. So again, uh, nothing really on the back. It's got the score lines to trim off, the pre-molded folds, uh, and it's, you know, the end of it is rounded. So on the foam to life, we took it and we scaled it up again. We scaled it up for big kids. We're still using a Velcro closure. This Velcro closure has been cemented on and stitched on, as you can see here, by the maker. The strap is black leather, nice and soft. It's got real good flexibility. Flop, the Velcro is quite strong. Oh, quite strong as you can see. And stays on the strap if you pull it hard. Right. Scaled up for big kids, this belt was made like real belts, like regular belts. Um, using bolts instead of screws and those bolt, bolts are covered up by a nice soft black uh, backing. And you can see how soft it is, not only by the flop that I showed you earlier, but you can see already that the wrinkles that it's getting on the, on the fold lines just from playing with this thing a little bit. You know, I've only had this a few days. I've only had it a few days out of the box and, and it's already getting nice and, look at that. Scaled up for big kids to have fun with. Um, and there you have it, guys. The foam belt. The WWF foam arena souvenir belt. Scaled up for big kids. The foam to life. Brought to you by the minds of Beltomania. Leading the pack, guys. Hang on real tight. I'm going to turn the camera around again. Show you this over the shoulder, around the waist, and then we're going to say goodbye. So hang on tight, and I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. We've seen it up close, the foam toy belt. Realized, foam to life. Uh, brought to you by the minds of Beltomania. There it is. Like I said, like I showed you, uh, you know, nice soft leather. You see how nice good flop. Doesn't do the replica belt thing. Sticks straight up in the air. It does a nice, clings to your back, nice and soft. And this sucker, is real easy to get around the waist. You know, you can even do it from the front and just a touch, and there you go, you're wearing it. Bang. 
and just another, and it's back over the shoulder, you know? Real easy, a lot of fun, really cool, man. Now, this is the first in a series. We shall also be recreating the Intercontinental, the tag, and the women's title, just like this. Real simple materials, real simple design, Velcro closures, coming to you from the minds of Beltomania. And speaking of Beltomania for the last time, if you like the shirt, Beltomania leading the pack. If you like the shirt, go to Get Your Bam, G E T Y O U R B A M, getyourbam.com, and peruse over 20 different Beltomania designs, including this NWO Wolf Pack. We have an NWO Black and White. Carmi Cola. Bam is War. Belt Mark Bell. Bam Joe, the family show hero. Mark Cyrus, the Moostodon. And television accuracy, Weasel Mania for Jeff Parthay. Go to getyourbam.com and peruse the 20, over 20 different designs. Pick the one that suits you best. Most designs are $22.99 each plus applicable tax and shipping. Go to getyourbam.com and get yours today. Thank you very much for hanging in with me. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click subscribe on the channel. That's Belt Mark Bell and hit the bell for notifications. Thank you again for the use of your head, guys. The foam to life belt. The toy brought to life. I have way too many toys. I have a lot of toys. I have a lot of stuff. I use my, my Miz and my Maurice too. I got, lot, I got a lot of stuff. I keep getting more stuff. Anyway, this is Belt Mark Bill saying that this is Belt Mark Bill saying. Bill out.